Hello everyone, this is Cindy Mazafer with Powerful Beyond Measure, and I am delighted to have tonight Kristen Beal. She is a native of Richmond, Virginia, and has been writing all her life. She was thrown into a disability at the young age of 14, and every day since there has been a struggle she had to overcome. She has fought through the unavoidable physical stresses of her condition for over a decade, and even more, the heavy psychological burdens that follow closely behind. Greater Things, the name of her book, is a raw perspective on everything from how people react differently, to her situation being in a wheelchair, to learning how to navigate and in, uh, through an inaccessible world to the handicapped and to just trying to make the best of a crummy situation. So I really would love to welcome Kristen. Thank you for being here with me tonight. Thank you so much, you're welcome. I'm really excited to tell everyone about your book and to share your story and how it really becomes an inspirational story for everyone, whether they're physically or emotionally and mentally handicapped or limited in some way, um, that how we can really use faith and courage to step out of that and um, really embrace life. And you're an expert on that, so let's dive right into this. So can you tell me a little bit about how you chose to write this book and bring it to birth? Definitely. I started writing when I was a sophomore in high school, right after my accident. Um, and I started writing because I wanted to remember what was going on. It was an outlet for me to vent kind of things that I don't say, that I don't, either don't have the opportunity to or don't tell people just because I'm a sweet girl. Um, and so it was a way of venting and recording the memories and just kind of getting things off my chest. When I write things down, I realize that I feel it. I realize my feelings about things that I don't really otherwise notice that I have. Um, so it's been very helpful in all this life that has a lot of drama and stress and whatever. You know, I think that's so true. I think a lot of people um, have emotions and uh, thoughts of um, insecurity, stress, anger, all different types of emotions, and that we tend to hide them from family and friends and, and the world in general. So writing and journaling is a great way for us to release that energy, that emotional energy, because it becomes, it can become trapped within ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how did you come up with the title, Greater Things? Greater Things, that was actually after a long time of debating what it was. I went to, when I was a freshman in college, I went to an event put on by a local church. Um, and it was we were packing um lunches for homeless people just lunches and little care boxes mm -hmm. and we got a cool shirt with it it just said greater things with a picture of the richmond skyline that's what it was and that's so i was debating um what the book was going to be and i was wearing that shirt and i looked down and i said oh i think that's perfect and it and i had it has a lot of reason to it because i have greater things of my book is all kind of focused around my journey to walk again to walk and feel below my injury level again um so it's kind of greater things working toward that goal and then it's also my journey of faith with this whole disability process i guess um so it's also greater things of i'm looking ahead at there are better things in this there are greater things in this situation that seems otherwise I love it. Such a powerful title. I hear your do your mom, your dogs in the background barking. Oh, do. They're in the garage. What kind of do. dogs do you have? She's a Pomapoo, Pomeranian mini poodle. She is my angel, and she's beautiful. And I'm sure she's killers. dear friend, dear friend. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. So, um, I love that greater things because you know so often, you know, we we can have the physical limitations, which is very severe for you. Um, but, you know, people are hurting in the world, you know, we, whether it's your divorce or you lost your job or your home or you feel unloved, you know, we're all suffering in some way and how we can frame that differently, how we can have the courage to live each day and look for that spark of light and, and the joy and then looking for the greater things of how we can um, resurrect, kind of create that magical um, part that we want in our life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so would you mind sharing a little bit about your accident? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, in 2005, when I, in, all, in the August of 2005, when I was 14 years old, 
I was um, about to start my sophomore year of high school, about 10 days away from turning 15. Um, I was at Lake Gaston with three of my friends, and I was in a jet ski accident. It was a collision of our two jet skis, where the driver of my jet ski fell straight forward and died on impact. And I was um, about, to, I was turning around, so I get hit in the traumatic brain injury and spinal cord injury. It's right above my belly button, it's my injury level. Um, and the doctors, that was in North Carolina. So the doctors at Pitt Memorial Hospital said, she's gonna die, she's not gonna breathe, she's not gonna swallow, she'll be a vegetable, you know, a long list of things um, that I continued to prove wrong. And I went to MC, from Pitt to MCV, they told my parents still, she's probably not gonna live. And if she does, then it's not gonna be a very good existence. Um, but I did, and I proved all that wrong. So the last thing on the list, they said that she's not gonna feel or move below her injury level, which again is mid torso. So this book, so Greater Things is my journey through the through the hospital, a little bit through the end of the the end of my time at the hospital, all the way up to about 2014, present day. Um, my journey to feel and move below my injury, working out, get that movement back, but also graduating high school, going to college, and the stigma that I had to deal with of being having a disability through an already difficult time in a in, in teenager's life and just the yeah. questions of that. So much to take on. It's such a very fragile stage in your life, the hormonal, the growth, the peer, the all those um, obstacles and challenges of high school and going on to college and, and then to be met with this fate. And I'm so sorry. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm so sorry about your friend that was on the jet ski too. I'm sure that that memory still is a very much part of your life. Um, so what do you find is more challenging? Learning to deal with your own physical limitations or how people react to you being in a wheelchair? Definitely people, how people react to me. Um, everyone in the world doesn't really know how to treat people who have disabilities, how to approach us, how to talk to us. And we kind of get, that's how we're, that's why we're stigmatized. Um, mm -hmm. My problems physical problems all that stuff I can deal with that and I can work that out but dealing with other people is the factor that I can't control and that's very difficult um, in terms of when I was in high school and in college people don't know how to react to me don't know how to treat me so they just kind of push away from me and I you know um, that was that was a difficult that was a very difficult time in my life um, right say that for other people I can imagine. And being a physical therapist, I've worked with many patients that have been in wheelchairs and are walkers or canes. And, you know, people are uncomfortable. They don't know what to say. There's an awkwardness. Um, should I ignore their disability? Should I confront it? Should I say something? You know, they're like, it's not like they don't want to engage. They just feel uncomfortable to just interact with the person and not interact with a disability. Is that kind of like the advice that you would ask or give to people? Um, as how you'd like them to approach you. Yes, I would say I'm just a 27-year-old girl, and I'm just like you. I just happen to be sitting down, and, you know, I just, um, it's not, whatever you, there's nothing you can say that would turn me completely off, um, and in my case, that would offend me or that would turn me away. Um, just treat me like a normal person. Right. That's exactly what I am. Right, and a good way to do that, and I think this is whether you have a disability or not, is to, to not look at the physical body as what defines the individual, the soul. And I think we, everyone almost in the world does that. You know, we look at their shapes, their gender, their color, um, so many different things, tattoos, you know, piercings, and, and we make judgments about it, and we don't see the individual soul. We just see the, the physical facade that is... Um, allows us to navigate in through this gravity, you know, fed earth, <laughs> you know. Um, I think that's really powerful. So um, why do you think you're able to overcome all these things the doctor is saying you're not able to, that you weren't supposed to survive, you weren't supposed to be able to feel? What do you think is the magic? What do you think that cutting around is happening? And what is that message supposed to mean? My family has been very big in this. My community has been really great, but more than anything else, it's been my faith in God and my belief that 
greater things are coming and that I have something to look forward to and that I have um, someone behind me, whether it's God or whether it's my family, my community, and I've just never really been alone in this. Um, I've never really been doing this on my own. That's huge. Um, and to always have something to fall, my faith to fall back on and always kind of make me feel like things are going to be okay. No matter how terrible they seem, it's going to be okay. Now, do you think that your feeling, when you put into it, the input about having this optimism, is, does that have a direct correlation to um, achieving the successes that you're seeing? Where oh you had viewed this differently, poor me, I'm a victim, oh my gosh, I'm sitting in a wheelchair, I can't do this and that and this and that, that your outcome would be different. 100%. Yeah. Um, I know people who have just in my same position and they've just given up and they've just accepted I'm in a wheelchair and you know, life is rough and this is how it is. And they're not getting things back. They're not, you know, having happen like being happy and they're not having a positive life. So 100% because my positivity and my outlook is the reason that I can do what I can do. And okay, so I'm gonna ask you a few questions. What was the most difficult thing that you've had experienced since your accident? Ooh. Um, I'll say college. <laughs> um, interact, um, going into a new environment and going to a new environment with all new people and trying to fit in in a place that I don't really, in a culture that I don't really necessarily want to fit into, but I kind of have to because I'm there and I need to make the best of it, but I don't really want to, you know, fit into the college culture. Um, so I had a really hard time making friends in the beginning. I eventually found my groove and graduated happy and great, but it was a struggle for me. It was a ninth, um, freshman year of college was one of the worst years of my life. I, I think for a lot of freshmen, but I can only imagine for you. <laughs> makes me better. Make me feel better to hear that. But you know. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody wants to belong. That's a very normal response, no matter where we are in our life. So what was the very best memory that you have that was just like so gratifying that just you know put you a fire and and just like whether you thought it was connected to God or just your own personal endeavors um, to mm -hmm. achieve such happiness what would that um, be that was after I went to California to a place called Project Walk two weeks out of the hospital and I came home and that was when I had no feeling and no movement when I when I went there when I came home after a month and a half of working out, I wiggled my toes. And that was the best, like the most exciting thing, the best thing, of course, obviously. Um, but it was also a mark of this is the beginning of I can do this and I can overcome this. They said I could never wiggle my toes or anything, but I'm doing it right now. So that was the beginning of now I have a long list of feeling and movement and I can do you know, a ton of things with my lower body that they never said that I could do. So that was the best moment of wiggling my toes is I can do this. Yeah, and just to have such hope, you know, to, to have something tangible to hold on to that right. and to know that you can continue. Um, and for any of you that don't realize that nerves do regenerate and she had a spinal cord injury and traumatized and so the nerve is trying to heal itself and as it heals itself you have the motor components and you have the sensory components of the nerves and so for her to experience most distally in her toes so the farthest away for the nerve to then be able to allow the, the toes to move is an amazing 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 feat so um congratulations on that and that's really exciting, really exciting. So um, let's talk a little bit about extracurricular activity, okay? So what do you do for um, maybe an adaptive um, sport that you might participate in? Yes, um, I love adaptive sports and I've tried, you know, a ton of them, every one that's available to me. A lot that I have a lot to say about a lot of them, but my favorite adaptive sport that I've tried is hand cycling which is, um, it's equivalent to running, which I've done seven marathons. Very proud about that. Wow. Um, very proud. And um, it's just a bike. It's a bike that has three wheels, and I just move it with my hands. Um, I, yeah, I move the bike with my hands, and I just hand cycle alongside 
all the other marathoners. That is amazing. Congratulations, Thank too. You. That is really amazing. Thank you. Um, you know, I think this is, should really be a story for everyone to hopefully listening to here is really a, a testament of strength and courage and perseverance and determination. I mean, so easy for us just to wallow in pain and stay in bed and all be the victim and um, want people to constantly show us empathy and that your life is over or so limited and and you can hear by Kristen that her life is furthest from being over she is fully embracing life and and loving it and you can see the joy and the smile and and just that's what's driving her success and I think for all of us we can take away this wisdom of um, the secret sauce if you will of what can create the happiness and joy in your life that you're the you're that secret sauce about how you approach it, which is really amazing. So, um, could you show us a copy of your book? Let's get yes, to see that baby. And again, this well, just came out in September of this year, 2017. It's beautiful. So, tell us about the cover. What is the book and the pathway, and why is it on the water? I think I know, but I'll let you explain. Mm -hmm. So, I got heard at Lake Gaston at my friend's river house, uh, lake house. And this, you'll learn in the first chapter before my accident, the story before my accident, that we were jumping off the roof of the lake house into the water and just the fun that we had around the lake, their boathouse, I guess, that, that's up in the lake. Um, and so you kind of tie it all together right there. And it all happened at the lake house. Um, so. Right. And, you know, even the walkway, the dock going down, because we have, a, I have a lake house too, um, and the dock going down, and, and this is a boat garage or a jet ski garage, if you will, that, that holds, you know, holds our vehicles. And, um, you know, it's like this path that brought her to this destiny, if you will, you know, being physically handicapped at this moment in her time in life. And you said something to me before we started the interview that you actually consider this your greatest moment in your life, the accident, you actually... Yes. Um, that's really weird to say that because it seems like such a traumatic, yeah. terrible thing. So aside from the death of my friend, this has been one of the greatest things that's ever happened to me, which nobody understands when I say that. My parents even say, you know, don't say that. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but it's been one of the greatest things because my life after my accident completely changed who I was in a good way, in my opinion. And I have been able to do things that I would have never been able to go do, uh, go places, meet people, and just have an impact on people's life that's so strong. And I've been able to give my, tell my story as a testimony to faith in God and the power and the grace and all that he can do. And that's been invaluable, and I would not trade that for anything. Yeah, I love it. And I love that you're so verbal about it because I too, you know, my parents were divorced. Nothing as traumatic as yours, but it was a, a scarring and an impact on me. And it really, walking that path and learning what I had to learn to overcome this wounding of feeling abandoned and rejected and, and wanting this, all this confirmation that it's through our growth of our obstacles that we're doing that allows us to walk that spiritual path, kind of like walking down that dock of how it's going to impact our own lives, but the lives of others. And when you really feel aligned with that spiritual destiny, that spiritual purpose, it, it really is, um, so profound in how you're reaching out into the world. I, I totally can resonate with that. And, and it's such a powerful way to um, be an instrument of God's instrument to help people to see the love in themselves, to see the strength and the hope. And that when faith, you use faith, that it, that you are strong. And I, in my book, is you're powerful beyond measure when you have that power within yourself to achieve great things. And um, so we talk from totally two different viewpoints, um, but it's such a powerful, powerful message. message. Now, you also mentioned to me earlier that your dad created Caring Bridge. Can you explain what that is? So Caring Bridge is something he created um, the day of or the day after my accident. It's an online journal website where he, people can go, and it's created for people to update everybody about their loved ones who are hurting or in an accident or whatever. Um, but he went in there because there were a lot of rumors going around and I was um, 
lot of different stories about my accident. So he would update it every day and tell my progress and say, oh, Kristen, you know, opened your eyes today, or Kristen, you know, is sitting up today. Um, and he, so he would, in the beginning, he would update it several times a day, and then he would do it every day, and now he just does it when something big happens, like I publish a book. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, um, and it's, so it's just a way to update your, keep your community up to date. So in my book, I've actually incorporated, as I tell my story, I've incorporated my dad's caring bridge, just like a little snippet from him. So you get both perspectives of my perspective that I'm writing and then the parents' perspective or, you know, someone else that's not me, a different perspective on it. Um, so that's been very good. And um, it's really helped the story to get a bigger audience. <laughs> You know, I think it's very profound. Um, my son, one of my sons this past January through March ended up having to need a liver transplant. And we were in the ICU for 50 something days, constantly 24 hours a day and sleeping there all through the night. And oh my gosh, it was, you know, so I love that you're bringing in the perspective of the parent because for the parent, it, it's so painful. You know, there's so much um, anguish and what can we do to help this and oh my gosh what can we have done to prevent it and all these things and and it's um, for me I always had this inner knowing that everything would be all right and everyone thought oh you're just being positive and I'm like oh, I had this inner faith of knowing like from angels signals all the time being told to me that it might be horrific going through it but everything was going to be okay but um it's such an important thing because, again, not even if it's just a physical disability, you know, so many times our parents try to resolve problems that their children are having. And we look at it from two different vantage points, but that, you know, no one could handle what you were going through, Kristen, except yourself. You know, yes, your parents were there loving and supporting you and being an advocate for you, but we have to take personal responsibility of that growth. Would you agree? I completely agree, and I and I understand. I appreciate how important it is to have that faith and that comfort and that. Yeah, it's very important. Yeah. So, what's the best part of your book that you really want people to understand and be able to walk away from? The best part, my favorite chapter in my book, is my last chapter, where I kind of um, I I say this is hard, like I'm not gonna pretend like this is not, like this is easy, this is hard, I have all these things that have gone wrong in my life, you know, I, I have a never ending battle that I'm fighting, but greater things are coming, and I have all this bad, all these bad things, but I also have a beautiful family, community, I have a good support system, I, you know, I, I kinda go into the good stuff too, so I, I kinda get real a little bit, but I put it in perspective and I, uh, my favorite part of my book is the way I was able to relate to people and kind of bring it. This is this is my battle, and you, everyone has their own battle, and nobody nobody's struggles are worse than anyone else's. So, um, um, so, beautiful. so would you also say then that finding your um, being grateful for all the wonderful things in your life, even among amongst or uh, amidst um, all the different bad things in your life, there's always good things that you need to see and acknowledge. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. This is so great. Well, her book has just been released early September, and it's, it's really pre-orders are huge, and you're not too late. So uh, Morgan Jean's publishing is her publishing. It's also mine. They're wonderful. If you're interested in getting the book published, reach out to either one of us, and we can get you connected to David um, Hancock, who is the owner of publishing, uh, Morgan Jean's publishing. So why don't you tell Kirsten why, where they can find your book? Oh, definitely. Um, you can find my book on Amazon, Borders, Books a Million, all the online, all the bookstores and the online online websites. And you can also, um, my favorite place you can get it is kristenbeal.com. Kristen with an I, Beal with an E. And you can get it. I will autograph it and stamp it and deliver it same day, next day. Mail it to you or deliver it. Um, that's the best place to get it. But you can also get it online or on bookstores. 
Yes, and it, it's worldwide. Um, Morgan James has um, our distribution house is Ingrams, which is worldwide. So if you're hearing this in Australia or Japan or whatever, you can order this book um, through any online or a bookstore. If the bookstores don't have it, all you have to do is ask and they'll be able to order it and then call you when it comes in. So again, her website is kristenbeal.com. And again, it's K R I S T I N B E A L E. Dot com and I'll write that in the um, the write up of this particular video. Is there anything else you want to say before we leave, Kristen? This has been absolutely great, and it's really a testament of your inspiration and strength and faith in seeing greater things in our lives. Awesome! I would just I'm just excited for the opportunity to share my story with everybody, and thank you for this opportunity. You are so welcome. So everybody, go out, order your copy of Greater Things, and realize that your life, your existence, the way you experience life is always able to reach greater things, but it all starts within you. Having the faith and determination and inspiration to excel and achieve greater things. So thank you again for being with me. Thank you for all of you that are listening and be well. And remember, you are amazing. You are powerful beyond measure and you are all able to reach for greater things. Take care until next time.